And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Callista Jinx bringing this deck back. This was part of our Jinx Spotlight Day last week, and so that was about 10 days ago. And this deck looked really good. It was really fun to play. And so I wanted to bring it back, you know, and so waited a little bit while we're playing other stuff. So basically what we have here is we have an aggressive deck, you know, with both with two very good aggressive champions that don't see a lot of play together and that's kind of today we're, we're we're gonna have like some different champion pairings that you don't always see that are really unique we got this one and like vladimir zed i put that deck together today i'm really excited about that um but anyway you know we'll have our aggressive shadow isle stuff with like the self-sacrifice you know with blighted caretaker curse keeper bark beast all that all that kind of stuff and uh and then if we have an empty hand you know we have jinx that if we empty our hand then you know we'll have get the round start get these super mega death rockets jinx is also a great attacker with the quick attack um so yeah like those two kind of go together with that uh but then we're also gonna have a good amount of nexus damage because we're gonna have doom beast is gonna be a big part of this um you know like being able to drain nexus and of course get excited so we'll have some nexus damage and then we even have like a third champion kind of with kiri and sump worker because if you can get, get kiri and sump worker get two of them, get the Sumpworks Posse. You know, now you're talking about this awesome, elusive attacker doing a lot of stuff. Really cool card here. And then with Shadow Isles, you not only have the iterative improvement to be able to copy Sumpworker, you also have Stalking Shadows that can help find two copies of Sumpworker. Because Stalking Shadows and Sumpworker work perfectly together like that. Because you get the two copies, you can play the Ephemeral first and then play the normal one. And you just, and then you, um, you know, you obliterate the one that's ephemeral. And so that works perfectly together. Of course, Stalking Shadows and Iterative Improvement also work perfectly with Doom Beast, getting you more copies of Doom Beast in the late game. So, so I really like this package of Sump Worker, Doom Beast, and then Improvement and Stalking Shadows. All right, so that's kind of our deck. Onlooker also very good with both Improvement and Stalking Shadows. You know, getting multiple 4-1 Fearsomes, you know, kind of gets you like multiple really cheap Decimates. So that also works uh, really well together. So let's get to it. Let's play some Callista Jinx. We'll go play our five games in ranked. Thank you. All right, Talia Lissandra. As you all know, this is a deck that I have really struggled against over the last couple weeks. Kind of just with everything. All right, so I mulligan Doom Beast all the time. You know, I love it. But it's, it's, you know, around 6, 7, 8 card, right? Like, it, we don't need it in the opener. And we definitely don't need all of these two. You know, we don't need three twos. Okay, so we're playing against Lissandra Talia. I think we're going to mulligan the Fading Icon also. Alright, so no one drop. Man, they always have turn one Frozen Thrall against me. Just makes their deck so much better if they have the turn one frozen throw because it just speeds up the everything else that they're doing. Yeah, like this is why like having that on round one is just such a big difference. Have to watch out for you know ice shards, avalanches, all that kind of stuff. Man, great hand. Great hand. Okay, Thresh Nasus. Let's let's try again. Anytime I play against that that Talia Alessandra deck, they have the best of hands. All right, so we have the the Sump Worker plus Iterative Improvement, which we're gonna have on round three, which is awesome. And I like Onlooker. Yeah, so I'm gonna just keep all this. This this looks pretty good. So basically, you know, we'll play the Sump Worker on on two, Iterative Improvement it on three. Which that so this all costs six total mana, which is how much mana you have the first three rounds. So we're not playing the onlooker. 
Yeah, I guess we need to start... Yeah, maybe that's what I need to do, start running Passage Unturned. Aw. Okay, so I can attack here, these die, but then that turns on Black Spear, and then they Black Spear kill the posse. I think I'm going to actually just pass so that I can have Iterative Improvement copy this again. Yeah, so we can have the mana for that. We love it when they run. That was the card I was worried about, though. That was the card I was worried about. Man, Merciless Hunter's good. Yeah, that's... That's really unfortunate. I should have played this Fading Icon. I should have played that. Of course, and I, I couldn't play this posse last round... Because if I played the posse last round, then, then again, they could have had Black Spear for it. I'm going to wait on the Onlooker, because playing Onlooker and then, like, attacking with Onlooker, Fading Icon, like, yes, we can, uh... You know, trade with the Merciless Hunter, but with Thresh in play, I don't really want to be doing a lot of trading. But yeah, I kind of regret not not attacking immediately. I don't know, it was the thing to do. Merciless Hunter is just a great card. If I didn't play the Fading Icon, and if I would have played Stalking Shadows instead, because yeah, we would have hit Sumpworks Posse. That would have been amazing. None of these are too important. You know, we're always hoping to hit Doom Beast or Sumpworks Posse or even Onlooker. Yes. Because if I'm able to attack with the posse, this thing's going to die anyway. So they're kind of telling me that they don't have Black Spear with attacking with that 4 1. Yeah, I guess we just trade. Well, my plan is, you know, Curse Keeper, Bark Beast, Wings in the Wave. My volume's really low. I like, can't even hear the, the music. They've, they've had exactly what they need. Or am I just open attacking? This one's ephemeral, right? Otherwise, you know, we'd definitely play this as a 3-3. Um, but I could just play this as a 2-1 and just open attack. Yeah, I think that's what, what we're going to do. Alright, so we got him down to 1. Unfortunately with Callista... I can't quite level up Jinx yet. Yeah, I'm one mana short from leveling up Jinx. I mean, I think about just sacrificing the O1 and 
you know, putting this ephemeral in play, and then that's two things dead for Callista. But I should probably just do that next round for a blocker. I'm just gonna pass. Let's see what they do. And maybe, maybe it would have been better if I just played Callista and Jinx here and then attacked. Because, um, you know, like, if they played, like, a, a Nasus or a Thresh, like, a really good blocker, that would take up a lot of mana from them. Definitely feel like I had the tools to win this. You know, attacking on round three, you know, maybe we would have got our thing Blackspeared, our Sumpworker Blackspeared, but we did draw another Sumpworker. Yeah, we may die to we may die to atrocity, and I guess that's the thing is we don't <clears throat> don't want to die to atrocity, but. I guess that can just happen because I kind of have to block here like this and that you know I guess we're just gonna die to atrocity aren't we unless we top deck get excited which we have five other get excited in the deck and we draw two cards looks we have the three get excited plus the two jinx um, yeah I can't uh, yeah I can Zeno I played donation decks basically every day. We have two donation decks today. Did you have a donation deck, Sleep Death? I also... I'll, I play donation decks if, if there's any specific day. Like, if you have a day that you want a donation deck played, you just let me know when that is, and I will play it then. Yes, it's all about atrocity. If they have it, I lose. If they don't... They don't. We'll be fine. Let's see. Attacking puts in a posse, right? No. Oh, it puts in this four three cursed. Oh, this this curse keeper four three. It doesn't put in posse. All right. Well, we got this posse. Okay. Yeah. So if you're gonna do a donation deck, you you can let me know. You know, if you want to play, like, hey, please play this deck on you know Tuesday, on Thursday. So I guess like the, the the turn I regret the most in here is was turn seven, whenever I had the Jinx and Callista and I open attacked. That's the turn I regret the most. That I that I wish that I I wish I would put more pressure on them. Because um, I was thinking I didn't want to, you know, commit to the Jinx because they could play a Nasus to block. But then after I drew Callista, I didn't really recalibrate of uh, being able to have both of those. Be able to play and attack, and that would have put a lot of pressure on them. And that's that's the turn that I lost this game. So that's that's the turn I lost this game. Doom Beast would have been so good to hit off like the Stalking Shadows and everything as we talked about. It would have been great to find a Doom Beast in that game. How are you doing? Wanna find wanted to find some early game. This is a horrendous looking hand. Wish I would have kept the Stalking Shadows. Yeah, they got turn one Zoe. This has been like the story of it's been like <laughs> two weeks now. Is I guess it's just every single game opponents have like the best hands they can have, right? Like they have every game like they have their their best one drop and between like the Frozen Thrall, Zoe, my last opponent with Thresh Nasus had only three cards to stop some porker and they had all three 
of those cards. I guess it's just how life's gonna be. Yeah, that's good. And yes, I could try to attack for one with Posse, but they use like the Sharp Sight, kill it. It's not a very good Posse matchup. This just doesn't seem like a very good matchup. Especially if they're going to have this kind of hand. Okay, so that worked. That was clutch, getting a getting a sharp side out of their hand. It was still a two for two trade. And you know, we traded Get Excited and Ravenous Butcher for For Zoe and Sharp Sight. I don't want them to know about the Sump Workers immediately whenever they make their first decision. And unfortunately, there's just no way for me to obliterate the Ephemeral one. And yes, I would trade Callista for a 5-6 Screeching Dragon, absolutely. 5-6 Screeching Dragon is super scary. Alright, so the good news is we got him down to 10. The bad news is, besides this Sumpworks Posse, I don't really have much else. Okay, good. Callista's a good draw. Gives me something else. Dang. Screeching Dragon's good. No, we're not really winning. I, I feel like I should have won the last game, but... First one, our opponent's hand was completely ridiculous. Be a good time to draw Jinx. Jinx or Stalking Shadows. Stalking Shadows getting another posse. Or just another another posse. We shall their yeah, the second game was super close. I I wonder what would have happened if I would have round two or sorry, round seven, played both my two champions before attacking instead of open attacking. So they have no single combat, no equinox, no double stun, and no sharp sight. You know, nothing that affects these Sumpworks posses or blocks them, right? Like they, we are threatening lethal with two Sumpworks posses. Hmm. And of course, no. They would have had to have no guiding touch or star shaping either. Gosh, Ravenous Butcher is such a bad draw. Fire and fury burn in me. So you're saying that um, Callista doesn't see Sumpworks Posse? Which I think I, I just gotta hope that that's not the case. I, I gotta hope that Callista does see Sumpworks Posse. Gosh, star shaping, yeah, we're we're dead. This is a tough matchup. We went 5-0 with this deck 
like 10 days ago. But man, these opponents. Yeah, it's Sea Sump Works Bossy. Okay, that's what I thought. I guess I should be attacking with the Ravenous Butcher too. Yeah, I should be attacking with the Ravenous Butcher. No reason not to. No, yeah, this is the exact same list that we went 5-0 with a few days ago. The game too, I think I had the tools. I think, you know, I, I made some decisions that made sense at the time. But, you know, hindsight and all. And also our opponents are just, they are really not, uh, they're really not having any chill at all. Like we, which when you're playing, you know, like an off meta deck like this, that's, you know, a little weird. You, you can't really like facing the tier one decks that have the perfect answers is, is going to like, that's a, you know, you're going to lose a lot of those games. We need them to not have amazing hands. All right, we can actually have Curse Keeper, Blighted Caretaker. Love Curse Keeper, Blighted Caretaker, especially against like LeBlanc and other two health things. Right, so I'm gonna mulligan these two. So yeah, choosing what to mulligan with this deck, you basically just want to, you know, you always want to focus on the first few turns. Um, I wouldn't really focus on leveling up Jinx with your mulligan, right? Like, Jinx is something that levels up later on in the game. So when you're deciding what to, you know, with, with what mulliganing and stuff, don't, you know, you want to be able to have really good first few turns. So I'm thinking I discard this Cursed Keeper. get excited so I'm gonna hold on to that so I'm just gonna hold on to the spell mana for uh, for doing that I would have loved to be able to play onlooker first like if this is a daybreak card play this first they play another thing and then I get these saplings out but that's a lot of damage even though they've nerfed Curse Keeper, Blighted Caretaker a couple of times, it's still an amazing combo. Even though Curse Keeper used to put a 4-4 into play, Caretaker was a... Um, Caretaker was a 2-1. That should probably be going up to the Nexus, I guess. They are at four. I guess I should just be throwing that upstairs. Yeah, because then I would have just got troll chanted. Yeah, that's that's silly. I should I should just be hitting the Nexus with that. Sharpen the blades, cure the kill. I should be hitting the Nexus with that. Look what I found. For glory. And then of course. Uh, you know, having the Doom Beast in hand. Alright, so their LeBlanc levels up. They put these in the wrong order. They just wasted that 4 damage. Right, like, like they should have the... The Glory Seeker should have gone first, because then it would have leveled up LeBlanc. Like, basically, this could be 9 out of 15 instead of 5 out of 15. Is that going to make a difference in the game? Probably not, but that should be a 9 out of 5. Could be 11 now. You must know me, little one. You must. Let's have some fun. <laughs> I'm on a roll. So yeah, I definitely should have that get excited go to the Nexus. They have to frostbite two of these things. It's possible they can, but no, they can't. Ha, 
But yeah, that's that makes sense. That I, I should have traded away the put the bark beast in front to block instead of the I did the doom beast because it was a three two instead of a three three. But yeah, it does make sense to put the three three in front because if I do top deck iterative improvement, I can copy doom beast. So yeah, next time we should put the bark beast. Ooh, the faster aggro deck. I mean, Gig Side kills those champions, which are really important to kill. So I guess I keep it because they're worth. It's worth two cards killing those champions, especially like Jinx. And yeah, maybe we just unload our hand to level up our own Jinx. I'm probably discarding the Curse Keeper. Or maybe that Bark Beast. These are just permanent three ones. I guess we just trade. You know, this matchup, we don't want to, don't want to take any unnecessary damage. Not the best trade ever, but can't always choose to have the best trade ever. All right, I'm going to just save the spell mana for the get excited. They just mul they just discard two get excited. Yo. Because if I play Jinx, I can't really block any of them because they're all, they'd all be three power. So I'm basically discarding whatever I draw. Cool. That card's just fine to discard. Oh, I hope this works. Yeah, let's get backfire, though. I, like, take out the Battlecaster definitely takes out the Battlecaster, but, you know, obviously, like, there's a lot of cards they can have that they can just discard those two immediately. We did, we did see them discard multiple Get Exciteds earlier. They rummaged away two Get Exciteds. All right, I'm, I'm going for it. I don't think it's Nexus. I think it's, it's either the Battlecaster or the Jinx. Oh, wow. That's the worst possible scenario. Not only do they empty the hand, they also have the vision. Gosh, that was that was bad. Should have done Battlecaster. Oh man, we are looking bad. All right, gotta block, block, block. Brutal. All right, my best draw again is another get excited that I can hit the crowd favorite. Come on, get excited, get excited, get excited. Nope. This crowd favorite going to be rough. No, so we're, we're about to go down to three with their super mega death rocket.
I don't know what I'm doing against this this crowd favorite now. I don't really have an out in my deck right now. So yeah, so this is the same list we went 5-0 with 10 days ago, went 1-4, but that's just the variance of, of playing five game sets. You know, like we had some more good fortune last time, opponents didn't have as good of hands, this time opponents had a lot better hands and did not have as good of fortune, and so, you know, we lost them. Like that's just, you know, same deck, you can go 5-0 or 1-4. There's What your opponent's doing has a lot to do with whether or not you are winning. As far as our deck goes, I was a little underwhelmed by like the Bark Beast. I kind of want to mind like a second augmented experimenter maybe because we never had augmented experimenter and that's always a really good card to have um get excited it's like the discard on the get excited was a pretty big downside in some of the games like the where i would uh you know discard and just run out of cards because i didn't have jinx or augmented experimenter that last game we did have jinx but then then again there's a lot of times where we just really wanted to draw and get excited i don't know they would just ran into, ran into some opponents that were running really hot and that's kind of the Kind of the definition of the last, you know, week for me. Been struggling in rank because of that. But that's going to happen. All right, so we got some other fun decks to play today. I th I mean, I, I like the deck. I like this deck a lot. And I think that I, I would be pretty confident in running it back and going 4-1. and one. I would. But that's kind of the same story that I've been saying a lot <laughs> recently. But I, I think this is a good deck, though. I do. You know, the Thresh Nasus game, I, I think I could have won that with different decisions, looking back at it. But they, they had the cards that that won for, like, the different decisions that I made. I think I should have won that game. And, you know, then you're talking about 2-3, which is almost 500. But that, that discard burn's really good. And they're, they're faster than us, and they had a, a great hand. The Lissandra Talia hand was just ridiculous. You know, is it round four? That they had double eight eights coming in on round four. You know, not much to do there. Two eight eight overwhelms on round four. Like, you know, you can't really outrace that. And uh, you know, and then the the Zoe deck, like Demacia Targon, is just really tough for these kind of like that's like the like one of the worst matchups because they just have so much Nexus healing and they had they had a great hand with with round one Zoe. They had different uh, Nexus healing cards, multiple Screeching Dragons with the fighting. They had Star Shaping. Um, you know, they had everything that you could possibly want. They even had the, you know, then the Mountain Goat to block Callista. They had just everything you could want. So, no shame losing that one, either. Alright, so that's, you know, like, those other three, besides the Thresh Nasus one, that one was definitely realistically winnable. Besides that, the other three, no real shame in losing those. Alright, but that's going to be it here for Callista Jinx. So those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button, and... Uh, leave those comments. Let me know if you got any cool uh, champion combinations that you want me to build or anything anything interesting like that. Hopefully, y'all enjoy these unique decks. Um, you know, sorry I didn't do better, but you know, it's it's a it's a tough world out there in ranked. All right, but that's gonna be it here for this deck. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.